In the quaint city of Strasbourg, nestled amidst the Alsace region of France, a peculiar phenomenon unfolded in the summer of 1518. What began with a single woman's erratic dance in the street morphed into a mass hysteria that left hundreds inexplicably writhing and contorting for weeks on end. This bizarre episode, known as the Dancing Plague, continues to baffle historians and medical professionals alike, leaving behind a legacy of unanswered questions and unsettling theories. The catalyst for this mass hysteria remains shrouded in mystery. Historical accounts point to a woman named Frau Trafia who, in July 1518, inexplicably began dancing frenetically in the street. This seemingly isolated incident, however, triggered a domino effect. Within a week, dozens of others joined her, their bodies compelled to move in a relentless, uncontrollable dance. As days turned into weeks, the number of afflicted individuals ballooned to an estimated 300 to 400 people. The dancing transcended social barriers, encompassing men, women, and children from all walks of life. The image of a bustling city overtaken by a collective, uncoordinated dance must have been an unsettling spectacle. The nature of the dance itself was described as manic and exhausting. Dancers convulsed for hours on end, often collapsing from fatigue and dehydration. Some accounts mention hallucinations and incoherent babbling, adding another layer of unease to the situation. Faced with this inexplicable phenomenon, city officials were at a loss. Treatments ranged from the bizarre to the religious. Dancers were forced to continue dancing, the rationale being that sweating out the toxins causing their plight. Musicians were hired to create a constant soundscape, further fueling the dance frenzy. Religious processions and shrines dedicated to St. Vitus, the patron saint of dancers, were also sought as potential remedies. Modern theories delve into the realm of medical explanations. One prominent theory suggests ergot poisoning as a possible cause. Ergot is a fungus that can contaminate rye grain, causing hallucinations, convulsions, and even psychosis, symptoms that eerily mimic the behaviors exhibited by the dancing victims. Another compelling theory centers on the concept of mass psychogenic illness, often referred to as mass hysteria. In this scenario, the initial incident with Frau Trophia, coupled with the prevailing anxieties and stressors of the time, could have triggered a psychological contagion. The sight of others dancing might have induced a similar state in susceptible individuals, perpetuating the cycle of mass hysteria. The year 1518 was a period of hardship for Strasbourg. The specter of the Black Death still loomed large, and social unrest simmered beneath the surface. These anxieties could have created fertile ground for the development and spread of mass hysteria. The dancing might have served as a way for people to express their anxieties and frustrations in a socially acceptable, albeit bizarre, manner. Interestingly, accounts suggest that the dancing ceased when the city council hired musicians to create a constant soundscape. This paradoxical response might lend credence to the mass hysteria theory. The music could have served as a social cue, encouraging continued dancing and delaying the natural progression of the hysteria. The dancing plague wasn't without its casualties. The relentless dancing, coupled with dehydration and exhaustion, likely led to several deaths. Historical records offer conflicting numbers, with estimates ranging from a few dozen to hundreds of fatalities. As abruptly as it began, the dancing plague subsided by September 1518. The exact reasons for this remain unclear. Perhaps the collective hysteria simply ran its course, or maybe the intervention of the hired musicians and religious pilgrimages played a role. The Dancing Plague of 1518 stands as a chilling reminder of the power of the human mind and the influence of social context. It serves as a historical anomaly, a testament to the collective anxieties that can manifest in such bizarre and unsettling ways. While theories abound, the true cause of the Dancing Plague remains an enigma. The lack of sophisticated medical knowledge in the 16th century makes a definitive answer elusive. The episode serves as a reminder of the limitations of historical understanding and the captivating mysteries that continue to lurk within the annals of human history. The Dancing Plague of 1518 may be a relic of the past, yet its unsettling legacy continues to resonate. It serves as a reminder of the complexities of the human experience, the power of the mind, and the enduring mysteries that lie within the fabric of history.